This is a picture of a Fields Medal. And this is a medal that is awarded to a mathematician. And they don't give these out very often. It's just every few years they give out one of these, along with a bunch of money, to a mathematician who has made a major contribution to the field. And you have to be really good at math and demonstrate that and make some significant contribution to the field to be awarded this medal. On the medal itself is a picture of Archimedes. Archimedes is considered the father of simple machines. He's, he realized that certain devices could multiply a force. And specifically, he studied the lever and the pulley and the screw. And he developed numerous contraptions that made use of these things in various ingenious and very useful ways. This is a picture of what's known as an Archimedes screw. And it's this helix, you see this helical shaped device inside this closed container and a handle up here at the end. And as you turn the handle, the helix rotates and with each rotation of the helix, some water is scooped up down at the bottom. And it stays here in the bottom section, but that section tends to move up as the helix rotates and then the water pours out the top. So this is a form of pump, so to speak. It's a, devi a device for lifting water. And this was used to move water into the city of Syracuse, where Archimedes was from, and it was also used on boats. Archimedes designed a massive ship, especially for the time. It would hold hundreds of people, and large ships are never perfectly watertight. They all tend to leak a little bit, and the water has to be removed. And this device was able to remove the water from the bilge, the lower part of the ship. Here's another picture of one. This uses a, a helical pipe. You can see the output section up here at the top end. And with each rotation of the helix, some water enters the pipe down here at the bottom. And it tends to stay on the low side of each curve here. But as you rotate the handle, that bottom of the curve tends to move up and water eventually pours out the top. Here's a picture of a simple Archimedes screw in use in the Nile River area. And uh, you can see the, the you can see a little bit of the hel helical shaped interior there, but you see the um, the construction there. And these guys, it, it's fixed in place. It's fastened to this post here on the ground, which is held down by those rocks. And it's fastened at the other end, too. And those guys turn the handle. And each turn causes some water to scoop up, and it comes out into the field. It's being used for irrigation. And there are thousands of these in use all over the world. And in this picture, we see a couple of very large Archimedes screws. These are powered by large electric motors. But you can see over on the right side down here, the water is scooped up by the helix and trapped against the right side of the device. And each turn moves it up, and it raises water to the top, and these people can ride down on this ride. Archimedes also developed what is known as the Claw of Archimedes. And he was from the, the town of Syracuse, which was a coastal town, and it was attacked by the Romans, and the Romans came over in ships. And Archimedes developed these devices to defend the city against uh, a marine assault. And you see, this is a picture, we don't know exactly what they looked like, this is just what one artist thought, thought they might look like. The, um, these hooks would come down on these ropes here and would, would hook onto the ship and would grab hold and they could lift the ship out of the water and typically could lift up one end of the ship and let it go and the ship would fall into the water end first and would take on water and would sink. And the Romans were terrified of these things. The Romans would sail up and they saw this happen a few times and it would happen um, effectively enough that they would, were just in fear and it got to the point where they would just see a little bit of rope or a little bit of wood start to protrude out from over the wall and they would just turn and run in fear. And the Roman general Marcellus realized that a direct attack on these guys wasn't going to be effective because they had these machines. And he was going to have to uh, attack the city with a long-term siege instead. Here's another picture. You see the city wall there and the boats coming up. And then the claw is what it's called. It comes down, this rope comes down, and, and somehow a large metal hook hooks into the wood, and they're able to pull and raise the boat out of the water. And people think it might have worked something like this. Here's the wall of the city, and here's the water over here. 
and so let's draw this. You've got a some kind of rotating mechanism here, and here's the claw, and then the, the rope comes down, and there's this hook on the end which can hook onto the ship, and this is one, one long beam like this. And they need to exert a large downward force here to lift the hook up, and so there's a, a pulley mechanism right here, and then fastened on the ground is another pulley and the ropes run around this pulley mechanism and by wrapping the rope around a lot of times you can multiply the force and then it comes out here and then people or animals could be attached here and exert a large force there and that force would get multiplied because of the pulley mechanism pulling down on this end of the lever resulting in an upward force there lifting the boat out of the water so we think, we're not exactly sure, but that's what some people imagine was the way in which it was done. And Archimedes was also using catapults as well. A catapult it makes use of a, a lever type mechanism to lob rocks. So he was attacking these on, uh, incoming boats from a distance as well with catapults. There's um, other stuff that was, was really amazing. I'll go ahead and mention this. This is not a simple machine, but it does deal with Archimedes and his brilliance. Um, if you imagine, say, the the beach here and so this is water out here and here comes the incoming Roman ship maybe some sails up there like this and it's bringing some troops over to attack the city the a story and we're not exactly sure if this is true or not but the legend is kind of amazing the the Greek soldiers would have these shields, these bronze shields, which would, would be polished, could be very bright if they're polished, and the story goes that these soldiers could line up here along the edge of the shore and take their shields and aim them so that the sunlight would come in and strike the shields and be aimed at the ship. So imagine all this sunlight coming in and being concentrated all onto the ship. So you get a large area of sunlight focused down to a small point and would set the ship on fire and this has actually been done people wondering whether this is really possible have actually done this and I think it was the 1970s some um, people set up a system with 70 or so shields bronze shields like this polished and set a boat on fire in just a few seconds the boat burst into flames this was done again I believe in 2005 for the show Mythbusters and it wasn't quite as effective on the show but it did work it did uh, produce some flames on a wooden boat as a result of sunlight reflecting off of mirrors so it's um, again that's not simple machines but it does show Archimedes genius that was used to defend the city um, in real attacks Archimedes is considered the father of simple machines. He once said, Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. And that phrase, obviously, he said it in Greek. It's translated differently. I've also heard it said, Give me a lever long enough and show me where to stand, and I shall move the earth. And so here's a picture of Archimedes, I guess a very large Archimedes with a lever moving the globe. Now, obviously, there's nowhere to stand to actually move the earth, but the point is, with a lever long enough, you could generate enough force to actually move a very, very large object, and Archimedes understood that.